In this video, I'm checking out this, a lens I've been wanting to get my hands on to check out since it was first announced. The Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8 zoom lens. Of course, this review is from a videographer's perspective, and there were some questions that came up for me regarding this lens that I needed answering. Firstly, is it any good? Does it live up to the huge hype, or is it too good to be true? Does it represent good value? And is this the only lens you need as a filmmaker? I mean, probably not, if we're being completely honest to that last question, but you know, it's, it's out there. It's been said, so let's find out and I'll give you my honest opinion in just a bit. But if you're new around here, I'm Harv. And I have lots of videos about videography and audio gear reviews and tutorials on my channel. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. I always get straight to the good stuff in these videos. And you'll notice I've timestamped everything so you can just skip to the bit you want. These videos are also not brought to you by any company in particular, apart from maybe my Patreon backers. The way that works is any funds from Patreon go back into the channel. I buy gear, I review it, and then I give the gear via giveaways to my backers. If that's of interest, it's inexpensive to be a backer, do check it out, it's all linked below. Anyway, onward. What is this lens? The Tamron 35-150 to f2-2.8 to Di3 VXD is a kind of wider end of standard to shortish end of telephoto zoom lens, which is an extremely useful zoom range for most video guys. Di3 means it's for Sony E-mount, although it's also available now for Nikon Z-mount. VXD means it has Tamron's best focus motor, and it stands for Voice Coil Extreme Torque Drive. And can you believe that they went with VXD as the abbreviated name for this instead of the full VCETD or the acronym VKTD? I find that baffling, don't you? Unlike some of Tamron's other lenses, they haven't included their VC vibration compensation that works in combination with Sony's sensor stabilization. Personally, I don't mind that they left this out because uh, I like VC for taking photos, which I don't do much of. I don't like it so much for video purposes. I just find that the effect it has gives it a kind of almost twitchy look. Do you know what I mean? So I'm glad they left it out, plus, you know, it saves weight as well. You know, adding VC would have added a certain amount of weight, so that's good. There are a few switches on the barrel. We've got an autofocus manual focus switch, which I appreciate. I really don't like switching this on and off in my camera's menu. We can also switch between three custom settings for the various functions of this lens. All of this can be accessed by plugging the lens into your computer via USB-C, and you can change the way the focus ring works, do some clever things with setting different focus points as well as updating firmware of course. It has nine rounded aperture blades which bodes well for background blur once you're stopped down a little bit. Optically this has 21 elements in 15 groups so it is a fairly complex beast as expected and this brings us nicely on to build quality. I recently reviewed Tamron's 28-75 G2 lens and was really pretty blown away with the quality of the materials used as well as the fit and finish. And if I'm being honest, if anything, the 35 to 150 seems even better. Everything feels so tight, solid, and premium. This is a chubber of a lens at around 16 centimeters long. However, the barrel extends quite a bit when zoomed in and it weighs 1.165 kilos in total, which is not a small amount. Tamron say this is splash resistant, which is awesome. It's got the rubber gasket around the mount, the USB-C port is waterproof. So this is just a really pro feature and just such great news for video guys. Moving on to the user experience and in the hands this feels beefy. I have to admit I thought it would be a little bit unwieldy when hand holding but I actually found I loved using it. It's still going to be quite heavy on most cameras so bear that in mind and there was no part of me that wanted to attempt using this on a gimbal. Yes there are gimbals out there that can take the weight so you definitely could, but I didn't want to subject my back to that. But with this focal range, if you can get it balanced and you're happy with the weight, this would make a really wicked gimbal lens. Anyway, now let me show you what this actually looks like and what it can do.
course I wanted to see how the lens performs in other ways. Here I'm checking for focus breathing and if we just pause here just in case you're not sure what that is, it's where on some lenses your field of view can change when you move the focus point and it's a really negative thing, we, we don't want that and it's one of the reasons why cinema lenses are so expensive. I always tend to reach for this old clip of some footage taken with my old Samyang 35mm lens as an example of what bad focus breathing looks like. Awful. So here I'm at 35mm and I've stopped the lens all the way down and I'm just focusing from closest focus to infinity and the amount that it's moving is really minimal and this is pretty remarkable for a lens of this type. I found that at 150 millimeters, similar performance, we're seeing remarkably little in the way of focus breathing. I'd say the same for distortion as well. I didn't notice any kind of distortion all the way through the zoom range. So performance wise, this is a beast. Moving on to value for money and alternatives. And as this is kind of an unusual focal range, it's hard to make direct comparisons to other lenses, except for the remarkably similar spec'd Samyang slash Rokinon, depending on where you live. 35 to 150, f2 to 2.8. Wait, that sounds familiar. When I saw this at first, I wondered, is this made by Tamron? It's not. But then I thought, well, is this a ripoff? And I'm not saying that. Compared to the Tamron, the Samyang is parfocal, which is super cool for filmmaking. If you're not familiar with parfocal, it just means that the focus point should stay where it is when you zoom in and out. I can't comment on the build quality of the Samyang, except to say that the Tamron would be hard to beat, but then the price is a tick lower. So I don't know, the Samyang, it's intriguing to be sure. So. I think the thing to do is for me to get one in and review it. And um, I really wanna hear if you've used that lens, just let me know uh, what your thoughts are and whether you'd be interested in seeing a review. And um, yeah, I'm gonna get on that. As for value, it's not a small amount to spend on a lens, but then at the same time, it performs brilliantly. It covers a really handy focal range whilst giving you a pretty nice max aperture and I certainly think it represents far better value than any Sony G Master lens. When thinking about convenience, I know this is a heavy lens, but personally, I would rather carry one of this lens, the 35 to 150, than a 24 to 70 f2.8 and a 70 to 200. And I know that my bank balance and my back will thank me. Anyway, next onto the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Starting with the pros, and this has an extremely useful zoom range. It really is just the sweet spot. It has a nice wide aperture that's kind of hard to find with this kind of zoom range. It's built like a tank. Professionals buy with confidence. It's super versatile. This lens can do almost anything you want it to, apart from some extreme situations like maybe sports, astrophotography, but you know, we're talking about videography here and those things are not my game. I've got to include image quality. Everything that I've shot with this, I've been impressed with the level of detail, the contrast from it. It has kind of a prime-like quality to it at all focal lengths. It's weather sealed, what's not to like? Before getting this lens, I really was a little concerned about the focus breathing side of things, I shouldn't have been. The focus breathing was remarkably controlled on this lens, which was kind of a surprise to me. And then the cons, it's large, it's heavy. I have to include it in the cons, but you know, you really should know what you're getting yourself into before you order this lens. I've included the price, and I'm not saying this is bad value at all. It's just, you know, you get what you pay for. And I imagine for a lot of people, this is gonna take some consideration before clicking that buy button. And that's about it. What else am I gonna complain about here? The fact that it's not a constant F2 aperture? Nope, not gonna do it. Finally, to my opinion, and I love using this lens and I love the images that I've captured using it. I I'm not usually that into kind of superlatives on this channel, but with this lens I feel compelled to go for it. So here goes. This is one of the best lenses I've ever used and I would say if you are a Sony user and you have to buy only one lens, it's this. I know it's not a budget lens, but it is one that's worth saving up for. 
you know, get it on finance. Hell, if you can get a good used copy, dear God, you're getting a an absolute steal. So long as the focal range suits your needs, I'm confident that you can buy this, you won't be disappointed, and be prepared to fall in love. Yes, I need to try the Samyang version uh, equivalent, but, um, but yeah, this is awesome. I had a few questions I asked myself in the intro, so I'm just gonna read them off and answer them. Is it any good? I think it's pretty clear how I feel about this lens. Does it live up to the hype or is it too good to be true? Well, yes it does and no, this is the real deal. Does it represent good value? And you know, I, I tried to answer that as best I could in the value section. Yes, but it's not cheap. And finally we have, is this the only lens you need as a filmmaker? And this is trickier to answer because at first I thought the answer would be no way. You, you obviously need other lenses, but then again, I'm sure if you were to give this to a filmmaker and say, you know, go, go, go out, create and come back and show me what you got. I'm sure the results you get will be nothing short of spectacular because it's that good. But I don't know, what do you think? Definitely let me know what you think about this in the comments section. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do you agree? What did I miss? As always, I'll be in the comment section as much as I can be. I'll see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos like this on my channel of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. <laughs>